Okay, you're doing an intro. Okay, yeah, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. My name is Eric Jamois, and uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our MIDD discovery track. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like to run a quick poll to see what best describes your current role. So let me run this poll for about 30 seconds. So, so thank you for selecting from one of these options, whether you're in uh, medicinal chemistry, computational chemistry, DMPK, or another role. Okay, I will now retrieve the poll. And I see we have about 30% uh, of computational chemists, 50% of DMPK, and about 20% of other. Um, it is now my pleasure to uh, welcome uh, David Miller, our uh, Vice President of Chem Informatics. And David heads the Admit Predictor uh, R&D team. So uh, David will be talking to us about HTPK simulation using the new REST API, and will also give us some information about uh, some update to our Admit Predictor platform. Uh, David, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Eric. Um, and welcome everyone again to the first uh, Discovery Tracked talk of the 2022 uh, MIDD conference. Um, as Eric said, uh, today's talk will be on uh, high throughput pharmacokinetic simulations uh, using our new REST API. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, save a little bandwidth and uh, spare everyone from the distraction of my uh, messy office. Let's see. Uh, so I've turned off the video feed. Eric, can you confirm that that worked? Yes, but the screen is still showing kind of an infinite. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, here you go. You're good now. You're good. Okay, and you can see my screen as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay, dokie. Okay, so I'm going to start by giving a brief overview of the Admet Predictor platform uh, and the HTPK uh, module. Uh, before explaining how the API itself works. So among the uh, software products offered by Simulations Plus, um, Admet Predictor is positioned at the very earliest stages of the drug development pipeline. Uh, its main functionality, uh, as the name suggests, is the prediction of Admet properties from chemical structure. Uh, there are currently around 175 predicted properties uh, in the categories physical chemical, transporters, metabolism, toxicity, and overall ADMET risk scores. Uh, there is a module allowing users to build their own models using our molecular and atomic descriptors, a cheminformatics uh, module with features like clustering, R tables, match molecular pairs. Uh, and a new design module used to discover virtual compounds with optimal property profiles. Uh, so Predictor is now well established in this discovery space, uh, but we saw the need for a module to help bridge the gap between discovery and preclinical, uh, where we already have a number of well-regarded expert platforms like GastroPlus. Uh, so our vision was a simplified tool for non-DMPK experts, uh, one that could provide reasonable estimates of important pharmacokinetic parameters at the discovery stage, uh, avoid the need to input experimental values, uh, which might not be available early on, uh, identify potential development issues as early as possible, uh, possibly even before compounds are synthesized, 
uh, and then allow fast processing of uh, thousands of compounds. So the result uh, was our high throughput pharmacokinetics or HTPK module. Uh, this integrates simulation technology from GastroPlus uh, to provide estimates of fraction absorbed and bioavailable, uh, a number of important PK parameters, uh, concentration versus time curves, uh, and the dose required to achieve a user-specified plasma concentration at steady state. Uh, the PK predictions are based not on QSAR models, uh, but on mechanistic simulations uh, in virtual human or rat species. Uh, these utilize two components, the so-called ACAT model uh, to describe uh, transit through the GI tract, and a compartmental model uh, to describe distribution and elimination. Uh, more details about the HTPK technology and validation uh, are available in the user manual and on the Simulations Plus website, uh, which also has recordings of previous webinars on HTPK, uh, including one from last year's uh, inaugural MIDD conference. So the simulations require input parameters. Uh, examples being compound solubility uh, and intrinsic clearance. Uh, default parameters are loaded from so-called HIA files, uh, which are part of the ADMET predictor installation. Um, this is a portion of a default HIA file, uh, which indicates uh, using this um, XML-like syntax that ADMET predictor model predictions will be used as the inputs. Uh, in this case for solubility and clearance. Um, S plus SW and uh, SIP HLM Clint are the names of built-in ADMET predictor models uh, for these two properties. Uh, users can also provide their own uh, inputs, uh, which is illustrated in this modified HIA file. Uh, the syntax here indicates that user-defined values uh, with these names, and here EXT stands for external, uh, that these will be used uh, if present for a particular compound, and that if missing, uh, the ADMET predictor models will be used. Um, these user-defined values can be experimental values, uh, or they can be predictions from a model, uh, whether built by simulations plus software or other software. Um, when using uh, the graphical interface version of ADMET Predictor, um, the HTPK input parameters uh, can be modified using an options window that looks like this. Um, any uh, numeric spreadsheet column can be selected as an input parameter. Uh, so this is an example of an HLM clearance in the spreadsheet. Uh, the name of that column uh, can be selected uh, in the interface. Um, so in this, in this paradigm, the, uh, the uh, HIA files that come with Predictor uh, don't need to be modified. Um, the advantage of modifying them is that would, it would prevent you from having to make this change within the interface uh, each time you run a simulation. Uh, when using HTPK from the ADMET Predictor command line version, uh, the input parameters uh, must be specified in the files, and those files are loaded each time ADMET predictor is run. Um, so in that scenario, um, users can either modify the default HIA files that come with predictor, or create custom files and then specify them on the command line. Uh, so here's a, a keyword for the use of a custom file, and then a full path to the file that the user has created. Okay, so now I'll shift gears and talk about the new API. Um, so this was added uh, in the last commercial release of Admit Predictor, uh, which was version 10.3. Um, so in this scenario, Admit Predictor is running as a service uh, on a remote server. Um, and this is, of course, at the customer site. Um, in our first release, that server had to be a Windows uh, machine. Uh, but in the subsequent one, uh, Linux will be allowed as well. 
Um, clients request predicted properties uh, using JSON formatted HTTP messages. Um, among the benefits of using the API uh, are that AdMet Predictor can be used by any third party software. Uh, and of course, this prevents having to install Predictor on multiple client machines. Um, model loading and other potentially time consuming initializations uh, occur just once when the service starts, uh, so predictions are faster uh, than when using the command line. Um, and then finally, uh, licenses are retained by the service and the jobs run uh, serially, uh, meaning one after the other, um, so that prediction requests are not blocked uh, due to the unavailability of a license. Um, so this is an example of a request from the client to the server. Um, compound data and HTTP, uh, HTTPK parameters are specified as part of the request body. Um, so this is a similar syntax to what we saw from the files, the HIA files. So here we're asking that a user-defined solubility be used preferentially uh, with the AdMet predictor model um, used as a fallback in the case of a missing value, uh, and then similarly for clearance. And then in the compound section of the request, um, for each compound, uh, in addition to an ID and a structure, smiles in this case, um, you have the option of providing uh, that user-defined data. Um, and this, of course, can be missing, um, as with the GUI and the command line. Uh, and then in an example, um, response from the server for each compound, a list of the uh, predicted properties. So FA, FB, uh, PK parameters, and so on, um, as well as any error messages uh, that occur. Um, one of the extensions for the next release uh, of the API is that estimated CP time curves uh, can be collected during the simulations. Uh, multiple compounds can be processed simultaneously, um, and the collected time points and concentrations can be sampled, uh, in this case, to reduce uh, the network bandwidth. Um, this was a feature we added uh, at the request of a couple of our customers um, in the case of command line usage. Um, there, it uh, can greatly reduce the size of the, uh, the result files that are generated. Um, the syntax looks like this, and uh, this is an indication of a uh, request for 20% sampling. Uh, and the response uh, that comes back in the case that CP time information is requested, um, you actually have the uh, times and concentrations in a uh, tab-separated string uh, that's embedded in the response. Um, I will show a brief example of this in the demo, which uh, I am ready to start now, but I believe Eric has one more poll question that you would like to ask. So indeed. Over to you. indeed, David, thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing this quick um, poll uh, here in the, uh, the transition to the software demonstration. Um, I'm going to uh, launch a quick poll on whether or not you currently use uh, Admit Predictor. So we'll launch the poll now and leave it up for about uh, 30 seconds or so and give you some time to respond. Okay, I will uh, retrieve the poll now. And uh, it looks like we have a significant majority of users with about 85% uh, or so users. That's great to hear. And uh, David, I will you, let you uh, transition to the, uh, to the demonstration part. Okay, great. Thanks again. Eric, let's see. Hopefully you're still seeing the screen. Okay, so now I'll, I'll just provide a brief demo to show how clients uh, <clears throat> interact with the API. Uh, so I have a, a remote machine set up to act as the AdMet Predictor server. Um, it's not actually very remote, it's in my office here. Um, and I have a remote desktop open to access that machine. Um, I have the Windows Services pane open 
on that machine, and it shows that the admit predictor service is already running there. Uh, so we provide the executable for this service as part of the admit predictor installation package. Um, so that service gets installed on the server machine. Uh, that machine must also have a full installation of the admit predictor software uh, and access to the Flexera license server. Okay, so now back on the local machine, um, I have to launch a, a client tool to be able to use the API. Um, so we have kind of a mock uh, graphical user interface client. Um, it's meant to represent something like Live Design or D360, um, both of which are pretty popular with our users. Um, so it's a spreadsheet application. Uh, there are 50 structures here, and there is user-defined data. There's a solubility value and an HLM clearance, and uh, you'll see some of the values are missing. Um, so first, I'm just going to show the settings uh, page here. So the IP address of the server is already entered here. Uh, there's a port number, um, information about SSL encryption. Um, there are parameters related to these settings that are defined in a configuration file um, that the user modifies and that is read by the service uh, each time it starts up. Um, and I'll click a box here to save the actual HTTP requests and responses uh, so that I can refer back to those during the demo. Okay, so the first thing um, I'll briefly show is the simpler of the two HTTP workflows. Um, so this is one where for each compound, we run a single simulation at a fixed dose. Uh, so the interface for that in this mock client uh, is similar to the actual AdMet predictor interface. Um, where we have options for species, uh, which defaults to human, uh, immediate release tablet dosage form, a fixed dose of 10 milligrams. Um, here I'll select uh, as solubility input the spreadsheet solubility as the preferential value, uh, and then similarly for clearance, the spreadsheet value. So again, these will fall back to the admet predictor models in the case of missing values. Um, and then I'll uh, add a request for CP time information as well um, using the 20% sampling. So if I click run, uh, a request is going to be made to the server and then very quickly um, the predicted properties are returned to the spreadsheet. Uh, we have FA, FB, and the uh, pharmacokinetic parameters. Um, the CP time information was collected and stored. I'll just show that for a few of the compounds here. Um, the effect of the 20% uh, sampling is um, evident if you look very closely and, you know, were to compare it to the actual AdMet predictor user interface. Um, it's kind of up to the user to determine the amount of sampling that's appropriate uh, depending on the parameters of the simulation, the length of the simulation, and so on. Um, okay, I just want to briefly now go to this archive file that was written as I did this demo um, showing the actual uh, uh, request and responses. So the original uh, request used a special URL to indicate the uh, first of the HTTPK workflows. Um, the compound section has the 50 compounds in it, names, smiles, and then the uh, user-defined clearance and solubilities. You see that they're missing uh, for some of the compounds. Then following the compounds, um, a parameters section, as I showed in the slides, and here the key ones are the uh, clearance here indicating use of the user-defined clearance as the primary, and then the fallback being admit predictor model, um, similarly for solubility. Um, the other parameters here are just default values. They match what's in the default HIA file. So these could all be omitted from the request. And then the response, as I showed in the slides, uh, includes the predicted properties for all the compounds. And then finally, the uh, CP time information at the end. So again, it's a tab delimited string of uh, uh, time points and concentration. All right, I'm going to close this for now um, and just briefly show the um, second of the two HTTPK workflows. 
So this is the, um, the more complex dose optimization uh, workflow where for each compound, we run multiple simulations at different dose values in order to find a dose that achieves a user-specified plasma concentration at steady state. Um, so the interface that's mocked up for this is again similar to the actual AdMet predictor interface. Um, similar options, species, dosage form, and so on. Um, I'll answer kind of an arbitrary uh, concentration here of 100 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, so that's an average total plasma concentration, again, at steady state. Um, leave the options for the user-defined solubility and clearance, um, requests for the CP time information. Um, it is a slower simulation, um, but you see at least for one compound, it's still very fast. Uh, the results are returned, um, and the prediction is for a 25 milligram uh, dose. Um, if I show the uh, CP time curve for that simulation, it shows now that in order to reach steady state, um, you actually need uh, several dose intervals. Um, so by default, there's a 24-hour dose interval. So here we're looking at one dose every, tw every 24 hours um, for it looks like several weeks uh, before steady state is reached. Um, and at steady state, uh, the average plasma concentration is a close match for what we requested, um, which was 100 nanograms per milliliter. Okay, so those are those are the two um, HCPK workflows uh, in a nutshell. Um, the last thing, I have a few minutes left, so I'll show one last thing, um, which is a new feature that's planned for the upcoming release, um, and that is the ability to simulate a command line run on the server machine. Um, this was requested by customers interested in the API uh, but who have already invested in building up a software infrastructure around the AdMet predictor command line functionality. Uh, so the idea is to submit a request to the server using ordinary uh, AdMet predictor command line arguments and have that run occur on the server and produce the identical result files there, uh, but with the advantage that it runs uh, quickly in memory uh, without having to actually invoke the AdMet predictor uh, executable. Um, so as a quick example, um, I have a command that I showed earlier in the slides. Uh, so it takes a smiles file as the input. Here's the name of a smiles file. Um, this is an indication that it's a request for an HTTPK simulation using a user-defined HIA file with custom parameters uh, and a request for CP time uh, data with sample. So now I can just take this entire command and I'll, I'll run it through this mock client. There's a sort of a simple interface for this. So paste that. So the job is submitted to the server and the response back um, shows the files that were created on the server, which can then be downloaded um, with separate API calls. So one file is um, a tab delimited file with the actual predicted properties, FA, FB, et cetera. And then the second one um, has the CP time information, times, concentrations, dose, species, compound name, and so on. Um, and then just briefly, I will show again the um, actual request that was made. So it's down at the bottom here. So it's actually a really simple. Um, request. The actual command line arguments are part of the submitted request, and then any files that are referenced uh, in the command line arguments are just included um, in the request uh, JSON body. So a smiles file with uh, both the structures and any user-defined data, the solubility, clearance, and so on, would be included here, and then the file containing the requested parameters. You know, things like using the user solubility and clearance and so on. So again, um, we've added this functionality mainly for the benefit of current users of the command line, uh, allowing them to switch to the client server model uh, without themselves having to write these complicated uh, command line wrappers and queuing systems and so on. 
All right, so I think that uh, brings the demonstration to an end. Um, I'll just say that our current plan is to have this uh, new release out in the month of April. Um, we are looking for beta testers, so if you uh, have an interest, uh, please let us know. And with that, um, I'm going to hand it back over to Eric to moderate some Q&A. Great. Yeah, thank you, David. Uh, really interesting things. Uh, before we jump into the q and I'm going to deploy the last poll um, and uh, about the deployment uh, conditions. So I'm going to launch the poll whether or not you are currently deploying a cheminformatics environment which can benefit from an API. And I will leave the poll up for about 30 seconds or so, and then we can jump into the Q&A. All right, I will now end the poll. And okay, so I think we have uh, one, at least one person who is interested. Um, great. Well, thank you. So let's uh, let me go see in the Q and A poll if we have any questions. I do not see any questions. Um, oh, do we? Or oh, for the REST API, do you plan to include other functionalities for MedMed predictors such as structure standardization, duplicate searching? Tolerantization, etc. Uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, that, that's a, a good question. Um, I should point out that the uh, feature I showed at the end of the demo for the um, kind of submitting command line arguments that doesn't apply to some of the newer script file workflows that we've added that include some of the things that the user just asked about. Um, but the short answer is yes. You know, I think. As we see more interest in the API, I think we'll gradually add more and more functionality to it. Good, good. And I think we may have time for one more before we jump to the next session. Uh, maybe, uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about speed and and uh, can we give us a sense of benchmark, like, you know, compounds per second in in, uh, in the simulations? I mean, uh, it's you know, you may know better than I do, but I mean, the short answer is that the API, you know, has the advantage over command line and that it, you know, omits some of those startup costs, um, some of the costs associated with license checking, since that all occurs up front. So if you're a user of, you know, admin predictor, you know, it's already fast, um, yeah. but uh, this, the, using the API does have some speed benefits over the command line by itself. Okay. Excellent, David. Well, uh, with about one minute left in the session, I will stop the broadcast and then I will see you on the other side uh, in a different room where, uh, you know, Pankaj will talk to us about modeling SIP sites of metabolism. So uh, thank you very much. And we look forward to uh, seeing uh, everyone in the next session. Thank you, Eric. All right.